postman Pat, postman Pat, postman Pat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, postman Pat, postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock, ring. Let us through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really Down at Greendale Village School, they had a model volcano. Just think, children, said Mr. Pringle, of all that rock going bubble, bubble, whoosh under the ground. You get your feet hot, said Lucy. No, you wouldn't, said Bill Thompson. You could wear your wellies. It was a long time before wellies were invented, said Mr. Pringle. The volcanoes made our lovely Greendale Hills long before there were any people, never mind wellies. Great holes in the ground, with rock oozing out like toffee. Did you say toffee? said Tom. I like toffee. I said it was like toffee, said Mr. Green, because it was all oozy, and it was so long ago that it was even before the dinosaurs came. You can all do a lovely painting tomorrow for open day. But it's home time now. Pat was waiting at the gate for Julian. Hello there. Hi, Dad. Time to go home. Come on, Dad, I'm hungry. Bye, Pat. Bye, Pat. Bye, Pat. Bye. The next morning, it seemed very quiet in the village. When Pat came to collect the letters. Oh, yes, I certainly will. Did you say it was near Torts and Ground? Dear me. Yes, yes, I'll tell him. Die for now. What was all that about, Mrs. Goggins? Oh, dear. Well, that was P.C. Selby. It seems that there's a great gaping hole in the middle of the road, near Thompson Ground. He says it's big enough to swallow a cow. Oh, I know what that means. Road closed. Diversions. Cones and bollards all over the place. How does he think I'm going to get through with all these letters and parcels? Talking about holes in the ground, Julian was on about volcanoes and earthquakes last night. Nay, Pat, it's only a hole in the road. Oh, we'll manage somehow. Bye for now. Bye, Pat. I wonder if dinosaurs would get letters. <laughs> and what did dinosaur cats look like? I bet they ate some huge fish, eh, Jess? Alf was out on his tractor. Pat stopped for a chat. What do you reckon to this hole in the road, Alf? 
what hole? I've seen now. I've been ploughing since early morning. There's a great hole just outside your farm. PC Selby shut the road off. Oh dear, said I. How am I going to get home? I'd best be off. Bye bye. Bye. Just in case there were any new holes that no one knew about. Oh dear. Diversion. So we can't go our usual way. I, I know PC sell me any diversions. Every time it ends up me going the long way round. Hey up. What's this? Oh no. Not another. And it's going back the other way. What? More diversions? <laughs> They're everywhere. Here we go again. Oh, this is awful. I'm getting dizzy going right and then left. Then right again. I should go straight on. Maybe if I went left. But I can't. I could go right here. I've just spotted where we are, Jess. <laughs> We're back where we started. Then Alf came chucking along. Don't follow me, said Pat. I'm lost. If you follow these signs, you just go round in a big circle. Nay, Pat, I can't be bothered with all that, said Alf. I have to get home and get my dinner. Let's shift this clutter out of the way. No problem. That far. Is what all the fuss is about? said Alf. <laughs> it doesn't look much to me. I've seen bigger, said Pat. A baby one. Now then, now then, what's going on there? Look out, here comes trouble. PC Selby. Come on, lads. You know this road's closed. You must have seen the signs. I'll have to take your names and addresses. Here, can you hold my tea? Don't be daft, Arthur. You've known us ever since we were in short trousers. Never mind that. We have to do it proper. Now then, how do you spell proceeding? Uh, you haven't got a pencil sharpener on you by any chance? Here we are. A nice, fresh cup of tea. Oh, thanks, Dorothy, said Pat. Just what we need. Dorothy, have you got anything to sharpen Arthur's pencil? Hang on, but if you could just hold this. And then, uh, Arthur, pass your pencil to Dorothy. Then if you take these... What have nothing to sharpen pencils with? I think there are two E's in proceeding. But is it a C or an S? I thought you said... Oh, um, bring the tea. Has anyone seen my notebook? Let's go on, Dot. <laughs> I think it's going round in circles like my van. Talking about that, you've given me an idea. Now, 
If we made everything go through Alfjord instead, we could probably... Uh, Ooh, dandelions everywhere. I wonder if there are any holes here. God. When Pat called on Miss Hubbard, she was acting very oddly, prodding about the garden with a stick. Very dangerous having holes in one's garden. Oh, morning, Pat. Morning, Miss Hubbard. You've not lost something, have you? Certainly not. I'm just taking precautions. Holes, you know, appearing without warning. P.C. Selby told me all about it. Oh, I wouldn't let it bother you, Miss Hubbard. It's only a small hole in the road. Cheerio! Bye, Pat. Bye. Pat called on Ted Glenn. Hello, Bert. Hello there. There was a parcel for him. Sorry I'm a bit late today, said Pat. It's this blooming hole in the road. I've had to go all round Greendale to get here. Don't worry. Leave it to me. I'll have that hole filled in no time. A bag of cement, a bit of gravel and some tar. That'll sort it out. All leftovers from a job in Pencaster. I knew it'd come in handy one day. Champion, said Pat. ta -da, Pat. Cheerio! Pat was on his way. Having delivered all his letters, it was time to go back to the post office. But he stopped at Thompson Ground to see how things were going. There was a whole new set of signs, leading into a field and through Alf's yard, where Ted's lorry was parked. It's like town centre here, said Alf. My poor ends. That's if you can find them, poor things. They'll not lay for a fortnight. Here comes another. Oh, it's Sam. Good morning. See what I mean, Pat? It's terrible. He'll be all right, said Pat, as soon as Ted gets that hole filled in. Come on, slowly as you go. Careful now. Teal! Called Dorothy from the kitchen door. And fresh biscuits, straight from the oven. Just what I need, said Ted. We'll have a sup while that tar sets. Are you coming for your tea, Arthur? Mind the tar, will you? Help! Help! Here, don't look. Come back! Help! But something seemed to be keeping PC Selby. Help! Come back! Help! Did somebody shout help? Said Pat. He's not looking for his notebook, is he? Said Alf. He hasn't gone and trod in it, has he? What are you doing to my nice new tar? Fast setting stuff, that. A new kind, you know. You'll have to take your boots off and leave them in charge, said Pat. Come on, Arthur. Off with your boots. Don't be shy. One, two, and lift. Oops, here, hold on. Time for a bit of farm transport, said Alf. Oh! Hey, steady on. My boots. How am I gonna walk? And you we'll need a new warning sign. Stay still and I'll tip you over. Very undignified, this. I'll never live it down. There. Danger. Police boots. Everybody should see that. I hope Dorothy's kept some tea hot. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat.